to the Davenport Football Coaches Special on Signing Day in 2021. Glad you could join us. I'm Rick Berkey along with the head coach Sparky McEwen. And Sparky, over the next uh, how many minutes uh, we will discuss uh, some of the players uh, that have uh, committed on the on paper, signed a letter of uh, intent to play for you uh, in the upcoming seasons, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And we'll talk a little bit of maybe a couple of transfers that you've had coming in. You've had a number of guys that we want to at least touch on a couple of them, talk a little bit about spring ball as such as well. But be, uh, before we talk too much, let's get the, the fans of Davenport football caught up on what's going on in the fo football program right now. What are you doing right now? What are you allowed to do? What are you not allowed to do? Well, we're preparing for a, a spring season, you know, right now. Right now we're currently practicing, and I know when you hear this, Rick, and you know we got the, the second of the polar vortex ready to take place here tomorrow. Uh, we're able to practice in the cozy confines of our indoor facility that we utilize. So having that is w one heck of a resource for us. So our guys get to get in there with our coaches, and, you know, we get to get in there and get after it just as though it was 70 degrees outside, you know. So uh, that's big for us because we're in preparation right now. We picked up where we left off uh, in October uh, when we had 15 uh, opportunities outside. Now it's called our championship segment. So we get to go out, and we've been after it since mid-January. So we're excited about that. Something that we touched on with you, Coach, a little earlier in, in late in the fall is that, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, they're football players, they're athletes, but – Practice is so important from a mental aspect for these young people because of everything they've had to go through through the pandemic that it's it's a release for them. It's a chance to get out and have some semblance of normalcy. You know, you got to have some type of, uh, you know, student engagement, you know, and, and right now uh, we're dealing with something that we've never seen anything like this, not in my lifetime. And, and I always talk to the student athletes right now and telling them that they're making history. OK, and our guys know they have to be very mature about the protocols as it pertains to the pandemic and they're doing a pretty good job they're doing a pretty good job so my hats are off to them and their parents and uh, it takes a, it takes a lot of discipline it takes a lot of discipline to come in and act uh, absolutely um, with these protocols Brick, because I tell you what uh, having to go through a practice with the mask on and different things like that and the social distancing um, our guys have done a wonderful job it's uh, one of the most exciting days uh, of the of the year on the calendar uh, with signing day for football now uh, they have an early signing day where most of the Division One guys are signing. That hasn't affected too many Division Two programs, has it, Coach? The early signing date? No, and if it, if it has, it's it's been in a positive way uh, because a lot of the kids that at the Division Two level that we recruit, uh, the GLIAC is a you know as known uh, throughout the country is a tough conference. So a lot of the kids that we recruit are Division One kids, um, and you can't get them all. And with this pandemic, this is one of those years now where you're going to get a lot of kids that are going to miss out on Division One opportunities. So there's going to be those D2 programs out there that's going to be able to uh, pick up on some of these talented kids. All right, we get a second. We'll talk a little bit more about maybe uh, some spring action that we can look forward to. But right now, why don't we get to, to some of these uh, high school players uh, that have signed on the dotted line, committed to you. We'll start on the defensive side. No necessary order we're going in. We're just going to pick them up at random. We'll start out with a defensive back from Ecorse, Michigan, over on east side, Daryl Cooper. You know, we were extremely high, you know, on him. And, and one of the things in our defense, we have a pretty good defense here. And, um, man, we've been doing a heck of a job by bringing in kids that can compete at a high level. We wanted to get bigger on the perimeters because when you go against some of our powerhouse programs, you know, in our conference, you got to be able to match up on the perimeter with bigger body guys. Uh, coming from a well-coached, you know, program, up-and-coming program that's doing a great job. We're excited about him. He's long, rangy, a guy that can run. At the same time, he can play physical at times. Coach Jovan Olafoy, uh, his coach over there at e Corps, and he was uh, an honor student, by the way, so you like having that as well. Next up on the defensive side, uh, again over from the east side, uh, Clio, Michigan, from Flint Powers Catholic High School, Donovan Franklin. You know, Donovan is a young man that we've been watching for some time. Uh, you know, he comes from a a program that's obviously is decorated and uh, well coached kids and here's another kid you know that we talked about in our in our staff room that you know we need these type of athletes one thing about the GLIAC in order to compete at a high level you're gonna have to have talented kids on the football field for you and we felt like this guy was a playmaker uh, he's a guy that uh, he could change a game you know at any time but he's also a guy that can line up you know at several positions 
you mentioned a playmaker coach. He also played on offense in high school. Correct. And Donovan Franklin, now you keep this in mind, you're, you're recruiting him primarily for defense now, but if you get in a pinch, you might want to think about this young man. He ran for 254 yards in one half. The first half he ran for 254 yards in one game this fall. Nice yeah. to have that versatility. He's got some skills. He absolutely does. Next up, uh, from uh, Florida, we've got a number of players from Florida this year. From Oviedo, Florida, uh, Seminole High School, he's a defensive tackle, 6'3", 310-pounder, Khalil Hunter. You know, he's a state champion. You know, I was able to uh, sit there at Tallahassee, Doak Campbell Stadium, and, and watch this young man play. And uh, you want to talk about a guy that's a, he's explosive at impact. And those are some of the things that you need in this conference. And we really felt like when we went against the powerhouse teams here, they were pretty much able to have their way with us on the interior. And now we feel like we're taking those necessary steps to bolster, you know, those pluggers inside. You're seeing some video right now of uh, uh, Khalil, and uh, we'll, we'll have some highlights uh, of a number of guys here today. Uh, back to Michigan, back to the east side of the state, uh, Bloomfield Hills High School, defensive back Norman Johnson. You know, Norman, once again, when you're, when you're playing at these uh, powerhouse, you know, uh, schools, and, and, and Bloomfield obviously is a school that won a, a uh, state championship, but once again, we've got to have those type of DBs that's competing in a week in and week out championship caliber teams, playing against big programs, and understands the big stage, okay? You got to be able to play in the big stage, playing in the GLIAC, and when you go, you know, going there to Bloomfield Hills, man, you know, I think today, they had uh, somewhere 15 or 16 kids sign scholarships. So we're fortunate enough to go in and have one of those type of kids come play for us. Coach Dan Luria's program's got it going over there at Bloomfield Hills High School. Let's head down to Ohio. Always a good place to look for a linebacker. And, Coach, you got a good one coming from Franklin High School in Franklin, Ohio, Gunnar Lakins. You know, our coach, he was able to go out and watch him. Uh, one of the things, Rick, about the, the pandemic is that a lot of these kids were hurt with the fact that they couldn't go to camps, okay? So we've been able to witness some of these kids over cur uh, past camps when we would travel out of state to watch these guys in the summer. So that's why it's so important to go out to camps and view these kids because here's a young man that we've been tracking for some time and we felt like, you know, we wanted to get big in the middle uh, because, once again, when you're starting to go against some of these teams with these big backs and big linemen, you got to be able to match up with them. You mentioned a little bit Ohio, Florida, and how has the pandemic affected uh, out-state recruiting? Is that it, I'm guessing it made it a little bit tougher. Well, honestly, it's a little easier for us. Okay. Uh, you know, we had some tough restrictions here in state of uh, the state of Michigan, and you know, due to those tougher pandemics uh, protocols, uh, you know, recruiting out of state was a little easier for us this year. Speaking of Florida, let's uh, head over to Kissimmee, Florida, not too far from Disney World. Poinciana High School was the home of another linebacker, Tyler Lang Bailey. You know, going in, Coach Walker does a great job, you know, with, you know, our linebackers. And, and we just graduated a couple guys in Kai Black, you know, the year before. And we felt like we really needed to get better at that position, okay? Kai was a heck of a player, uh, well-respected in the GLIAC, but we wanted to get a little bigger at that position. And we've begun to do that, okay? And here's another guy, plays physical, as you see, big guy, downhill, in the box, you know, prototypical uh, Mike. So we we're excited about him. Averaged almost seven tackles a game from his linebacker spot uh, with uh, Point Siena High School. We'll stay on the defensive side, and uh, we'll stay in Florida as well. Orange City, Florida, at University High School, defensive back Terrence Pope. You know, here, here's, here's another young man. You know, you're talking 6'2". You know, you're talking 6'2", coming into a conference in, in the NFL. You know, they love to get a guy of that caliber, of that size. So, once again, my staff has done a tremendous job of tracking guys, you know, going – as far as Florida, finding guys that can play, this guy is rangy, okay? And this guy, we, what we liked about him, he was a good tackler. Out in space, he did a great job in space. He's got length. And then last but not least, you gotta be, you got to be able to run. We're seeing the highlights from Huddle, and i, I got to think that coaches across the country, you and your staff, uh, just uh, relish the opportunity to watch kids on film so that you don't have to worry about necessarily recommendations from somebody that saw him play. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, because once again, when you're talking about kids out of Florida, these are kids that you haven't necessarily been able to watch, you know, um, in camp. So we have to lean on those coaches big time and our connections that we have in these different uh, states and cities, you know, to have quality film. And as you see there, that guy had quality film. And then the coaches, those guys down there are well coached, you know. So Florida's been good to us. 
We'll head back to the state of Michigan, uh, the capital area, East Lansing High School, the home of linebacker Nick Pulley. You know, Nick is, you know, this is the area, once again, you know, Coach Walker, he's been watching him. This is one of Coach Walker's uh, recruiting areas. He's extremely, extremely high on this young man. You talk about another young man, you know, plays well in space, good sure tackler, good athleticism. You know, Kai Black showed you how important it was to be a good athlete, okay? He wasn't the biggest guy, but you know what? He was a dangerous athlete. And once again, this kind of this kind of player here kind of resembles a Kai Black type of guy, a guy that could ultimately play in another position in the, um, the, the defensive backfield as well. Well, Nick played with a winning program uh, with Bill Farrakos, uh East Lansing squad there. He was 15-4 and four over this final two years. How much weight, Coach, do you put on a winning program, or do you figure that that's kind of out of the player's hands? How much weight do you put as far as what? you know how his team did we talk about it you know because once you get these kids you know on your on your campus uh it's so much easier to coach those guys that's been coached up okay um you know when you when you talk about these winning programs and these coaches that do a great job of coaching them up it's a little easier transition for them once they get to our level uh many times these kids they get off to the collegiate level and it's on sure talent and speed you know things like that uh, and it takes a little longer to develop them, okay? Those ones that have been coached and, uh, and they've been doing a good job with their fundamentals and things like that, it's easier for them to transition and get on the field here. You mentioned wanting to get a little bigger at the linebacker spot. Well, you stayed here close to home, Belding, Michigan, the home of linebacker Tanner Smith, 6'4", 215. Well, here's another young man, athletic, but look at the size. He's 6'4", he's 215. He's a guy that is going to fill out in that frame. He's a guy that we felt like can run. Um, we did a heck of a job of tracking this young man. You know, he's, he's, he's up there, you know, in Belding, and a lot of teams didn't go up there, coaches didn't go up there and, and visit with this young man, but we saw something in him. You know, one of the things we did, Rick, is when we recruit, we like to project guys. We like to project guys. We like to take a look at these guys and say, what's our, our player development going to look like? What's this player going to look like in two years? Well, he's 6'4", 215 now. You know, now That's once, a great you get, start. <laughs> once, once, once you get into a program and you start putting him through, you know, some battery of drills and things like that, the fundamentals, and you really coach a guy up, you know, the sky's going to be the limit. All conference, all area, and all county for Monty Price building squad was Tanner Smith. Staying on the defensive side, we'll head back to Florida, Ocala, Florida, Lake Weir High School for Carone Williams, a defensive lineman. 6'5", 230 pounds. We, we feel like, um, man. We got a guy that can come in here and impact us pretty quick. Okay, now the next step, he's going to have to go ahead and take this thing on head on and try and beat out some people. But this guy can flat out play football. He's athletic. Uh, this guy runs around pretty well. He's long. Uh, he's going to have a bright future here at 6'5", 230 pounds. Uh, you know, and he'll tell, you he's, he'll tell you he's still small. You know, so uh, he loves the weight room. Here's a kid that we feel like has a tremendous future here, and we feel like he's going to do something special, be something special in the GLIAC. Carone had four sacks in one game, and Coach, a 3.9 grade point average. Yeah, he's smart. He's smart. We love seeing that as well. We head back home to the Flint area, Grand Blank High School, defensive back Lorenzo Wood. You know, <clears throat> once again, you're talking about another, you know, good program. And, and here's the thing, 6'2". Okay, here's the thing, 6'2", 6'1". When you're going against those type of programs, when you're playing our teams in this conference, you know, they get a lot of national attention. You, you know, those, those teams have big receivers outside, okay? Um, they throw a lot of back shoulders and fades and things like that. You know, you got to have big guys to combat that, you know? And we feel like going to get some of these kids here the last couple years, and you're going to be able to look out this year. It looks like we're going to be starting, you know, a couple kids, you know, 6'2 and 6'3 on the edge. You know, that says a lot. You've talked a lot in the last few years about your desire to get taller at the wide receiver position, and you've done that. But now, again, obviously the other teams are doing the same thing, right? That's why you need the bigger DBs. Absolutely. All right. I think that is the last of the offense or the defensive players. So uh, we'll flip over to the offensive side, and we'll come back to West Michigan and start out to, uh, not too far from here, Forest Hills Eastern High School, quarterback Cal Doyle. You know, Cal, you know, we have his brother, Brady, on the team. And, and you want to talk about someone that loves football. You know, he's passionate about the game. He loves the game. And, and we really feel like we recruit him as an athlete, okay? He's a big kid. He's a big, he's a big man. And we really feel like he's the type of kid that's going to come in your program. And once he gets here, we're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. And what we like to do, we want to go to games. We want to watch our kid impacts the game, okay? 
this kid played the game with a passion, and he showed enough athleticism to us that we say, hey, we could figure out once he gets here because, once again, he's got great size. Right, so yeah, you you could move him around, maybe a wide receiver, you know, even uh, eventually a slot receiver for you, perhaps. You don't or, know, right? Or or maybe outside linebacker. Oh yeah, you put a little pounds on him. Yeah, I can see that as well. Jason Vanderlaan would have been a pretty good outside linebacker. He would have been okay. I wouldn't okay. want to run into him. That's okay. for sure. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're going to head over to the east side of the state for our next offensive player, Brother Rice High School. A terrific tradition there in that program is Nick Deverell, wide receiver at six two one seventy two. You know, Nick's going to fit right in with the guys that we have here now. And, and, and Rick, now you've seen us for the last couple of years. We've gotten a lot bigger, you know, on the perimeter. And, you know, in this league, I'll say it again, you know, we're lined up against bigger DBs. And what we like to do offensively, you're going to see more about who we are this year as an offense opposed to the last couple of years. We just didn't have the pieces. Okay, I feel like we have, you know, more of the pieces right now. And uh, he just come along in a line of players that has that type of, type of size and speed you know, that we look like, look for on the perimeter. Next up, we go back to Florida, Eustis, Florida, Eustis High School, an offensive lineman, 6'5", 290, Brock Mays. You know, Brock, uh, he's got a twin brother, by the way, that's going to be coming here. Um, boy, he had a really, really good career, you know, there. What a joy, great family. And, and here's another young man that we feel has got a bright future. And once again, when you're starting to find these kind of kids, you know, uh, in Florida, guys that have some athleticism, some guys that can bend well, um, and he's really young. He's really young. He's still growing. So we're excited about Brock. Um, we got an early look on Brock, and we're just glad to know that we're able to pull him out of Florida, get him up here to Michigan. It seems your, your Florida connections get stronger year by year by year. Are you getting a sense that the Davenport name is growing in the Florida ranks? Y you know, uh, yes, yes, absolutely. And those kids come up here and they have success. Uh, but our coaches, our coaches have done a tremendous job of going down there and building those roots and, and, and building those relationships, you know, uh, with those guys. You know, like I said, I went down to the playoffs this year, and uh, we just spent some time with those coaches. And, you know, as long as you take care of their boys, you know, their boys are going to take care of us. All right, we'll get back a few more high school players. Let's take a, a little brief stop here to talk a little bit more about the spring. Uh, you had said you'd hope to get a game or two in this spring. What uh, – uh, what are the prospects for any type of competition, if not if not outright games, uh, scrimmages uh, for your team this spring? Well, you know, we, we want to play, okay? The biggest thing is, you know, Rick, we haven't played since 2019, okay? In 2019, that's a long time. Our boys want to compete, okay? And right now we're more in a player developmental mode, but right now we're currently, you know, talking with teams, and you have to work through the different protocols in order, you know, to play because, you know, Teams in Pennsylvania, teams in Ohio, they have different protocols than the state of Michigan. Well, one other thing we at least need to bring up because you hear it so much uh, at the Division One level, and now the two as well, is the phrase roster management because this is a free year from the NCAA for everybody. That means this doesn't count against your eligibility, which sounds great when you think about it from the athlete's standpoint, but if you're going to think about it from the coaching standpoint, that brings in a whole new set of challenges because, yeah, you can get guys back the next year, but you also have a routine you're used to as far as, you know, certain guys, so many guys leave, so many guys come in, and now it's going to be jumbled with extra players that at least have the option to come back. How are you and your staff handling that? We did a pretty good job. Uh, we, we had one player that opted out, and, um, you know, his career is, is, is now over, and he was a starting DB, and he had a heck of a career for us, um, Deion Powers. Uh, we would have loved for Deion to come back, but he graduated, okay, that's, and that's what we want. You come here to get your degree. Uh, that's number one, and he got his degree. And, you know, with all the protocols and the pandemic and everything that's going on, he just made a decision that he wanted to start working and, and start life, you know. So, um, you know, when I look at some of these teams today and I see the number of players that they've signed, and, and I was just wondering about what happened to the players that were on the team the year before. Um, we've done a pretty good job with retention here. Um, a lot of our guys we've retained, uh, just like anyone through – your attrition, you know, you're going to lose some people. But our boys have done a tremendous job of, of, of facing this challenge of the pandemic, sticking it out and and uh, taking on this mental battle, you know, with this thing. So um, this has been our smallest high school class we've signed, uh, but we've still signed some other transfers as well. Let's get back to some more of those signees. Uh, well, young man who played his football, high school football, about five minutes from here over at East Kentwood High School, big tight end Brandon Miller. 
you know, I, I watched him play three times, and he played quarterback, okay? And as I watched this young man play, I just wondered why isn't anyone on him. I feel like we have got a football player, okay? He's a man. The OK Red is a, a conference that's well-respected in the state of Michigan. And he's at the either the largest school in the state of Michigan or second largest school in the state of Michigan. And Tony Kimbrough did a heck of a job. As you see the guy in his highlights, he throws it around pretty well. And the guys, the games that I happen to go to, he's a pretty physical kid. So here's a kid I think that can come in here, compete at quarterback. I think it's a kid that can come in here, line up as a tight end. He may play outside linebacker. But the games that I were at and watching this kid as big as he is, you know, the athlete that he was, I said, it's a no-brainer for me. And how many times do we now see watching guys on Sunday, and it, the, the announcers mention, oh, he was a high school quarterback, by the way, and now, you know, they've got that great body, and they've turned into a terrific athlete, a tight end. He's going to do some wonderful things here. That's great to hear. Let's head back to Florida, Melbourne, Florida, Merritt Island High School for an athlete, Devarius Mitchell. Man, you're, you're saying back to Florida. That makes me feel so good. I wish I was there now in that <laughs> beautiful sun. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, wait, wait till 48 hours. You'll really wish you were there. You know, I appreciate that. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, once again, here's a young man. I tell you what, well-decorated young man, great speed, great quicks. He's a guy that's going to play in the slot for us. Um, when you're going down to Florida and you absolutely wear the jersey number one, that says it all. Okay, that's the type of player he is. Okay, we were able to go down there. He's special. He's got, he's got some great tools, smart young man, you know, well coached. He's electric. Um, excited about uh, getting my hands on him and working with him and, you know, putting him in, the, him in the red and black. Coach, how do you and your staff handle it? If, if it ever comes up, maybe it doesn't. Um, when you're looking at a player and he, he says, you know, that maybe they're a high school quarterback or a wide receiver, and you see them as an athlete that you may want to put somewhere else, and you recruit them that way, do you ever get any pushback uh, from kids who say, no, I'm a quarterback, I want to play quarterback, or no, I'm a wide receiver, I see myself as a wide receiver. Do you ever get any of that? No, when we go in, we're, we're, we're straight up with our guys, okay? We go in, and, and, and on our board, we have positions, okay? And then we also have athlete, okay? And I like to tell all our kids that, man, we recruit athletes here. We've taken, I think, in this class four or five quarterbacks, and all of them aren't going to play quarterback. Most of your high school teams, their best athletes, play quarterback, okay? And, and going in and getting guys, you know, like Miller, 6'5", 220 pounds, you know, and that's playing quarterback in the, in the, the largest school, the second largest school in the state of Michigan, I'm pretty sure you can find a position for him at a Division two school. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, we look at these athletes, and, and, and we do a heck of a job, I think, of projecting kids either in their position or in another position. Well, I, I think the next guy won't be an issue as far as moving around. Uh, offensive lineman from Delton Kellogg High School, not far from here, 6'6", 310 pounds right now, Cole Pape. Cole's a giant. He's a giant. He's a gentle giant. You know, he's a, he's a great young man. Uh, great family. We're excited about him. And um, we have struggled at the tackle positions here, you know, at Davenport. But right now, man, we, we got a, a group of kids coming along even this coming year. Now you're going to see, you know, the size change. You're going to go from those kids 6'2", you know, now up to about the 6'4", to 6'5", range. And he's every bit of 6'6". Six, six. He's a powerful, you know, young man. I mean, he's, he's, he's a big fella. So we're excited about uh, working with him. Uh, you know, my O-line coach did a great job of recruiting him. All-stater for Coach Ryan Bates at Delton Kellogg's High School. All right, another young man that didn't play too high school ball not too far from here, uh, drove some uh, OK Red coaches crazy running the football at Granville High School, running back Cam Terry. You know, Cam, if, if, if you think about uh, the OK Red, once again, we know it's, it's, it's a tough conference. Anybody, when you talk to coaches on the east side of the state, and when they engage in games against teams from the OK Red, they know it's a very, very physical, uh, you know, conference. Here's a young man that put up some tremendous, tremendous numbers. Uh, well coached. You know, the head coach does a great job, great win percentage. Here's the deal. This young man is so strong. OK, we've tracked him for a number of years. And as you see here. Um, running through guys on the video. Well, there. Well, yeah. it, well, here's the deal. He will run away from you. OK. On my clock, on my clock, I've clocked him at a 4-4. And, and, it's, and my own players will tell you, you don't get many 4-4s out of this watch. You know, so I'm excited about him, man. And, and 
keeping them home. You know, one of our deals when we recruit, we, we try our best to keep kids home. And obviously having him, um, we're fired up. We're excited about it. And think about Fugate. You, you got Fugate here. Yeah. And you got sure. Cam Terry. These are the two kids a lot of people don't know. They were consensus first team, you know, all-staters, and we got both of them here at Davenport. Cam Terry rushed for over 3,500 yards for Coach Eric Stiegel at Granville High School. Is that all? That's all, yeah. <laughs> 30, 38 touchdowns, 38. We could, we could have used some of those touchdowns the last couple of years. We certainly could yeah. have. We'll stay here on the west side, a little north of here. Greenville High School played for Coach Nick Davis, athlete Grant Thwaites. You know, Gr Grant's one that um, – it's it's amazing because we were watching these these guys through the signing period or the early commitment stage and here's a young man that every time he played he was pretty much the best player on the field okay you happen to see him playing right now up there he was going he's against another the high big, school yep. you know the, against big reds mm -hmm. but he's another quarterback if you take a look at this kid this kid loves football he's going to continue to grow um, where's he going to end up playing I don't know but I can tell you what he's a heck of an athlete he will be on the field I can guarantee you that because. When you do the things he's done over his career, here's a guy, he plays the position at a comfortable level. And that's one of the things that we look at right away. How comfortable is he in the game? You know, does he love the game? Does he play the game and have fun? He does. And he's a smart young man, so we're excited about him. Coach, you had a number of transfers uh, that come in. We're not going to have time to go over. We wanted to focus on the high school kids mm -hmm. who signed today. But we want, I want to get you at least a couple of them out there to, to, to talk about. Uh, let's talk about young man from Central Oklahoma, wide receiver Amante Phillips. I hear really good things about him. Amante is, um, you know, you know he, he's one that you're really going to enjoy watching. He's explosive. Uh, he's got an NFL grade. Uh, here's a guy that right, explain what that means to the listener NFL grade uh, NFL grade means they're going to be at your practice every week okay tracking him he's got an opportunity to uh, take get a large a higher grade meaning the next step is going to be a draft grade so here's a young man that he's only going to be a junior and the sky is the limit you want to talk about a leader you want to talk about speed you want to talk about hands uh, he has all the things you're looking for now when you lose a powers and you lose Nate you know our last two MVPs were receivers. Okay, I lost both those kids, so we had to, um, you know, get you know uh, Journey Sloan. You know, he's a returner for us. We had to get him some help. Okay, we got Miles Goldburn coming back, and so we had to go out and we we got Amante, and uh, Amante's doing one heck of a job for us right now. All right, one other uh, transfer we want to mention uh, from North Alabama, offensive lineman Jake Whitehead. Well, you got to you got to you got to protect your quarterback. You have to. You got to protect your quarterback, and and we we've, we've had some uh, some issues with protecting our quarterback, and we went out and um, we got him from North Alabama, and if you know anything about football, you know they play serious ball down there, and this young man's a grad transfer, and and he's going to be one of the anchors to our line, uh, extremely powerful young man, Rick, and and. He's, he, you know, he's a wonderful guy to be around. And here's another young man that uh, he's an NFL diamond. He's the one that's getting that type of attention. So getting those type of kids in your program, man, it's only going to make all the kids around here better and uh, just bring good positive attention to your program. Coach, in general, the one thing I hear from the Division One coaches uh, the most about the, uh, their laments uh, is – is the transfer portal and that kids today in general, they're generalizing, but it, it seems to be a common thread. They don't want to wait their turn. They don't want to, you know, if they're not playing right away, uh, then, then, then they're, they want to head out of there. How do you deal with that as far as assessing, is a kid going to understand that, yes, we want you, we have a great future in line for you, but we're not sure when that time's going to come? Well, when we recruit these kids, these kids understand that, when they, you know, meet our staff and they, 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 you know, figure out our personalities and our character, they know we're, number one, going to play the best players. That's, that's number one. That's understood. We can't worry about all that other stuff, okay? My guys know when I go to recruit, I tell every one of them, I'm going to find someone to replace you, okay? So if they don't understand that coming from Coach McEwen, if they want to jump in the portal, hey, man, it's there. It's there, so it's, it's up to them to use it. In the meantime, those guys that stick around here, they will be champions. All right, and so as we look ahead to the future, uh, uh, just in general, uh, it's, it's generalizing, Coach, but uh, this high school group, it, can you pick a position saying that may be the strongest one uh, of the group uh, that, as far as uh, the kids that signed today? Secondary, secondary. Um, any, any head coach will tell you you've you got to be good on the perimeters. 
and if you got to find some guys that can impact the game, and um, in this in this conference here, okay, they run the football, okay. You got to be able to stop the run, and one of the ways you stop the run, you got to get your safeties involved. The way you get your safeties involved, you got to be able to lock people up, you know, on the perimeter. So we felt like we did a good job there. Um, we got some defense alignment, you know, that I really feel like that could come in here and uh, you know do some damage as well. So in those two areas, you know, I felt like we did extremely well, and then obviously we got a couple big offensive linemen in there that I think is going to give us some depth. All right, Coach, uh, again, you're trying to get some competition this spring. Uh, we know you're going to have some games this fall. And what can, can, is it too early to say what kind of team uh, that, that you'll have next fall, if not uh, earlier? Better than the last three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, you better, know, that, that sounds trite, but it's not. Hey, it, you, better, you, better than the last three. That's what we look at. We want to be better every time we go out. And, and this DU team needs to be better than the last three that we've had here. Bigger, stronger, faster, right? There you, there you go. All right. Uh, that's going to – we look forward to it. And uh, you can make sure you, you keep an eye on DUPanthers.com uh, to get all the information on anything that's going to happen with the football program this spring and, of course, in the fall. So uh, that will wrap up our signing day special from Davenport University. For Coach Sparky McHugh and I'm Rick Berkey saying thanks for joining us. And don't forget, go Panthers.